Now the worst of all for COVID rates is Saskatchewan. It leads the country in per capita COVID-19 cases, has the lowest vaccination rates in Canada. But the Saskatchewan Health Minister, Paul Merriman, today told reporters that the province is still not asking for the federal government to send in the military or medical, military medical staff to help with their overwhelmed hospitals. He claims the Saskatchewan health care system currently has enough resources to handle the load, which is curious because that province is also in talks with the Ford government of Ontario to possibly send patients to Ontario hospitals. And there's talk that they may also need the same help from Manitoba. We did ask the health minister uh, from Saskatchewan and the Premier Scott Moe, but their offices declined our request to join on the program. But the press gallery is here with a special guest from Saskatchewan. First, we've got Joyce Napier, our CTV News National Bureau Chief here in Ottawa. Robert Benzie, the Toronto Star's Bureau Chief at Queen's Park. And our special guest is Ryan Miley, Saskatchewan NDP leader, and he also happens to be a physician. So welcome to all of you. Um, Dr. Miley, let me just start with you. Just to, can you explain, maybe you can't, I don't know. Uh, on one hand, the, the province of Saskatchewan says, we, ha we don't need any help from the federal government, we can handle it. On the other hand, we're seeing them asking Ontario to get ready, they may need support. In your view, what's the situation and is more help needed? You know, I wish I could explain that message from the current government, the health minister, but it, it's not logical. Uh, we heard yesterday from the head of our health authority, the head of our emergency response team, that we are days away from sending patients to Ontario, that we're days away from implementing ethical triage, that situation where physicians would be put in the position none of us ever want to be in, deciding who gets life-saving care and who doesn't. And the following day, you've got the Minister of Health saying, we're fine, we can handle this. The truth is, we need the help. The leadership within the healthcare field have made it clear. We need the support from the federal government. It is politics that is getting in the way from the minister, from the premier accepting that help. What, what do you, sorry, putting, what do you mean by politics? They're dealing with their oh, own internal might... battles. The, the Buffalo Party, which is sort of the local version of the PPC on the right, they're not wanting to take the steps and show the courage to get things under control. And so they're putting politics ahead of people's lives. My God, jo Joyce, uh, what, what do you make of that? The, the federal government can't send help to Saskatchewan unilaterally. The province has to ask for it first. Um, what do you make of the fact that, again, lowest vaccination rates, a hospital system on the brink, and you got the opposition leader said politics is in the way. Well, isn't politics always a little bit in the way? You know, we try to ask the doctors uh, to separate the science from the politics, the way we try to separate politics from religion. And sometimes it's very difficult to do. Um, you know, the, the, the asking the federal government for help is a bit like, you know, pleading guilty. Well, somewhere, somewhere along the line, there was a failure there. Uh, either to convince people to get vaccinated, uh, to push people to get vaccinated. And, you know, it's the triage, it is the triage question uh, that the opposition leader uh, just, just mentioned now uh, that is the most worrisome, who lives and who dies. Um, and all those people waiting in, uh, you know, all those people waiting for treatment, uh, for surgery uh, out there, which is uh, the, the untold story uh, and the story that we don't talk about because all we're doing is we're concentrating on those people with COVID who get to hospital who are unvaccinated. But there is a whole other story out there that politicians dare not take talk about because if they do, then it speaks to the failure of, of the political failure and also the failures of our healthcare system. Yeah, Ben's. let me talk to you. A, Ontario may be stepping up. I don't know if you've heard any news if they're going to step up to help uh, uh, Saskatchewan. But, but, you know, what do you make of the fact that, you know, Ontario's opening, Saskatchewan may need, but they're not, this is a, a premier that does not seem to want help. Yeah, it's, it's just, it boggles the mind, uh, Evan. I mean, um, Premier Doug Ford is, is, is a close political ally of Premier Scott Moe. It's probably the premier that he's the closest to uh, of any in, in the country. And, and if Saskatchewan needs the help, Ontario has the capacity because we flatten the curve here 
uh, many weeks ago. Uh, we have about 150 people in ICU with COVID-19 in Ontario, and we have the capacity for 2,300. So we're in, we're in good shape here, and we're in good shape because people in Ontario have gotten vaccinated, and they've always worn their masks indoors. Uh, we are at 82% fully vaccinated in this province. Saskatchewan's at 72%, so full, 10 full percentage points behind and they and and you know the the mask masks. I had a friend who was in Saskatchewan recently and, and and wore her mask, and she was surprised that people were kind of giving giving her a double take when she had a mask. I mean, that is just not you're not living in the real world. You're not living the real COVID world if you're if you're thinking that you're got, not going to have to take some precautions uh, for your own safety. So I think Ontario will be there to help Saskatchewan, Evan. Uh, but you know, Premier Mo has to ask for the help. Yeah. Uh, and, and Dr. Miley, the military critical care nurses that Alberta asked for have been in the province for about a week. It took days for the Canadian Armed Forces to be deployed to Alberta. The reinforcements from Newfoundland and Labrador finally arrived in Fort Mac. Is, in your mind, two questions. Is Saskatchewan taking a gamble by not preemptively asking for federal assistance? And just on Ben's point there, do you need stricter uh, mask mandates there or, or vaccine mandates to increase the vaccination rate? Now, I'll just uh, step back a second to Joyce's comments about, about the failure that has to be admitted. And that's that this summer, the Premier basically gave up. He said that the fight was over and that we could move on. Eliminated mask mandates, uh, refused any discussion of vaccine mandates, and so really created the conditions for the worst fourth wave in the entire country. And it's really important what she's pointed out that you know, we're, we're not able to deal with COVID care, but we're also seeing our organ transplant system shut down, cancer surgeries being canceled, care for kids, that essential, crucial, timely developmental care so that kids with developmental challenges can learn to walk and speak is being canceled so that the same people, the professionals who should be doing that work can be doing test and trace to try to uh, respond to the overwhelming waves of COVID-19. We failed this summer because the Premier gave up. Now, he refuses to admit that failure, and so we're missing the opportunity to get ahead in the response. And it's absolutely crucial that we be asking the federal government to help. I've spoken to folks at the federal level. They have told the province what's available. They, everything from help with test and trace all the way to setting up field hospitals, that help is there. We should be asking for it, and to not do so in a way that's endangering people's lives is, is you know, political malpractice on a, on a fatal scale. Political malpractice on a fatal scale. Joyce, um, you, know, you know, it is fascinating, and, I, and you wonder how Scott Moe explains that to the people of Saskatchewan. Again, they say, well, we're, bare, we're just at capacity, but, you know, at capacity with COVID, as Dr. Miley says, the knock-on consequences for other medical procedures is massive. Absolutely. And that is one thing that politicians are not talking about. Doctors are talking about it. Doctors are bringing out the fact that there is going to be triage. It is already happening. So people who have refused vaccines, some legitimately, they have questions, they have fears. I, I you know, I feel for people who have, you know, fears or, 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 or genuine concerns about the consequences of vaccines. Uh, we can't ignore that. But there are a lot of people who think, I don't need the vaccine. I don't need what the government or science to tell me what to do. And the minute they get sick, guess what? They go towards the science. They come to the hospitals. That's where they go. So you're going to have to choose. The doctors in those hospitals are going to mm. have to choose between the cancer patient and the patient who hasn't had a COVID vaccine and, you know, who is in the ICU. There is going to be a time if these politicians don't get their act together and don't face the reality and ask for the help they need and, you know, free those ICU beds for other people patients, but uh, but uh, but COVID patients, yeah. there will be a crisis in this country in certain areas, Saskatchewan being one of them. Yeah. Uh, New Brunswick, again, they canceled uh, Thanksgiving. Even those who were fully vaccinated couldn't get together. Uh, you know, he yeah. went medieval on the province, but maybe that was the way for him to flatten the curve.